On December 17, 1903, man made the first successfully controlled flight in an aircraft, thus breaking a barrier that had existed for millions of years. Today, man, with his intelligence and reason, has suddenly come to the crossroads. Some believe that the guided missile and electronically controlled space vehicles are the ultimate answers to space flight. The recent orbital and suborbital achievements have been spectacular and extremely important. However, man will never be satisfied in the undignified position of sitting in a nose cone acting as a biological specimen. Sixteen years ago, at Edwards Air Force Base in California, a highly complex operation was initiated to develop an aerospace craft that would satisfy the desire of man to maintain control in flight and in re-entry to the Earth's atmosphere. The spacecraft would fly, glide, and land completely under the control of the human operator. And now, the X-15 is ready manned by a pilot who will make all the decisions for accurate control and flight and re-entry and recovery. X-15 is the key to an operational procedure that will be directly reflected in the spacecraft and the space flights of the future. X-15, the world's first manned aerospacecraft. Manned for this flight by Matt Powell, chief test pilot for NASA. This is the carrier, an especially designed B-52 jet bomber, lifting the X-15 to its launch altitude of 45,000 feet. And this is her crew, pilot, co-pilot, launch panel operator, especially trained, highly qualified. This is Chase 2. The pilot, Lieutenant Colonel Lee Brandon, chief test pilot of the United States Air Force. He's also an X-15 pilot. And today, he is one of the support pilots who will visually check the X-15 through the countdown and then guide it back to the recovery area for the landing after the drop. This is Chase One and Major Ernie Weil, one of the Air Force backup pilots, getting first-hand knowledge of the X-15 flight procedures. He's qualified in the X-15 with the small XLR-11 engine. And today, he'll back up Matt Powell for a flight with the XLR-99 engine. The XLR-99 rocket engine has nearly 60,000 pounds of thrust. The final OK here rests with the pilot. He has control. 
Major Anthony Rinaldi, USAF, responsible for the human operator and his special equipment designed to support life in space. Colonel Craig Brewster, Chief Human Factor Section, United States Air Force. Tom De Parma, X-15 Project Manager, highly qualified aeronautical engineer. He is NASA One Test Director. With him here in the control room are the engineers and technicians of NASA and the United States Air Force who watch their tracking instruments and recorders receiving thousands of different pieces of information from special equipment in the X-15 and from electrodes taped to the pilot's body. This is the team, along with the high-range tracking stations at Beatty and Ely, Nevada, they monitor and support the X-15 flights. A highly complex project, running smoothly, completely operational. This is Chase 2 to B-52, coming into position. Acknowledge, over. Roger, Lee, this is B-52. Have you in sight? Chase one to B-52. I'm in position. Honey, read me over. You're loud and clear, Ernie. We're five minutes to launch. Radio on lower antenna. How do you read? Five square mid. Auxiliary power units coming on. Matt, confirm X-15 oxygen. On X-15 oxygen, 1800 PSI. Helmet to suit differential, good. Respiration rate, acceptable at 20 per minute. This is NASA 1. Let's get a good control surface check. Chase 2, observe. Confirm launch tramp settings. Over. NASA 1 to Chase 1. You all set, Ernie? NASA 1 from Chase 1. All set, Tom. McCulley to NASA 1. 45,000 feet. One minute to launch. Okay, Matt, you got it. Coming up on launch point. Roger. Give me a five-second countdown for launch. This is final okay to all stations. Launch light is on. Stop the countdown. Confirm source pressure failure. What are you reading now? Source pressure failure affirmative. Below normal and falling. NASA 1 to X-15. Matt, is this a no-go? X-15 to all stations. This is a no-go. I say again. This is a no-go. Well, I've worn out my fingers on this. NASA 1 to X-15, proceed to alternate plan. Matt, can you dump the propellants? X-15 to NASA 1, negative. NASA 1 to 008. How much weight can you offset by wing trim? 008 to NASA 1. Not enough fuel transfer possible. Have to make landing with right wing, critical. Department to all units, this is an emergency. The B-52 will attempt a landing with the X-15 mated. Request all emergency equipment, all firefighting units, deploy along runway 35 on South Lake Bed. Repeat, South Lake Bed. Leave the data on. Keep the primary radio channel open. I'll use it for mobile. Let's go, Colonel.
should be on final approach in about 10 minutes. Light the flares, please. Stay in close at the landing. Okay, I'm coming in at your 10 o'clock. About three miles north of our station. How long Route 66 is. <laughs> Maggie, you look indecently wonderful. Did you look that good this morning when Lee left? You wouldn't think so. <laughs> Come on, let's get your bags. Okay. Oh, they're awful heavy. Oh. Uh, 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 you take it. that. Yeah. All right. Coffee on? Yeah, yeah. What have you two been up to? I want to hear all about you. Well, I tell you, it's in the world. Tracking 76 miles east and 56 miles north. Uh, Roger, that's the one. Hey, Ma, you can see him! That's not the crash siren. Listen, it's constant. It's not the short blasts. 
What is it then? Maggie, can we call? No, nobody calls during flights. Oh, I'd rather hear that siren than the phone ring. Chickened out, huh? Yeah. Can I still resign, Doctor? You feel okay, Matt? A little stiff. Where does it hurt? Can you give me some details, Matt? Especially about the pressure failure. Sure, Tom. As soon as I'm out of the suit. Good. You got a smoke? Yeah. Here. All right, let's get you out of this thing. Hi, Pam. 
How are you, Pam? Let's go to my Your house. house. Excuse me. Yeah, come on, come on. <laughs> All right, Pamela, why? Because I couldn't stand my quiet, uneventful life, that's why. Just like that? Just like that. No, you don't, Pamela. No more games with me. Oh, you fool. I came a long way. We well, are a little late. I hope you enjoyed the trip. Matt, don't do this to me. What took you so long? Gotta be love. Come on, I'll help you sweep all the place. Oh, all right. Hey, what happened? I stole my homework. Well, I'm glad to hear it. So that's exactly the word I was trying to think of. Homework. <laughs> Come on. Now with usual distribution. Copies and so forth, so on. Very truly yours, Thomas A. De Palma. Ah, uh, that's all, Barbara. And oh, would you get that typed up for me as quickly as possible? Yes, I will. Thank you. On Barbara, uh, get headquarters in Washington on the direct line for me, please, right away. Yes. Sir. Yes, sir, we had a source pressure failure at the final countdown. No, no, sir, we were forced to land the X-15 made it with a full load. Yeah, it was, it was quite a trek, but the B-52 pilot made it look easy. Uh, Major McCauley flying, sir. Yes, sir. Well, we'll be getting national press coverage in two weeks on the big engine ground firing. That'll start the countdown for the next flight. No, I wouldn't exactly say we've had... Bad press, it's just that sometimes when things have gone wrong, some of them have emphasized it a little more, and... Oh, you know, sir. Right, the port... No. Oh, well, the report's being prepared. I'll be off to you tonight. Right, sir. Goodbye. Colonel Brewster to see Tom DePalma. Yes, Colonel, he's waiting for you. Thank you. You know where his office is? Right. Hi, Tom. Come on, Craig. I'm uh, glad you called me. I've been wanting to talk to you about something. Sit down, get it off your mind. Tom, I got a problem. Hmm? Cup of coffee? No, thanks. I don't know exactly how to put it, but I'm going to try. We've been on this project a long time, right? We've had some setbacks, and sometimes we've been lucky. But the time is coming when all this work and this whole project is going to have to pay off. I think I have an idea what you're getting at, Craig. 
let's see if we, we can't talk it out. Hmm? Well, now, don't get me wrong. I haven't lost faith or anything like that. It's just that... <sighs> Frankly, I'm scared. <laughs> Join the club, Colonel. I think everybody involved is a little scared about what's coming up. I know, I know that. It's just that suddenly I'm beginning to doubt my own judgment. After thousands, thousands of hours of simulating on the ground and really putting these pilots through the ringer, I think they've reached a damn high degree of accuracy in all phases, right? They're tuned to a fine edge. Hanging on to this edge is what concerns me. Now, all the pilots have normal tensions. But what if these normal tensions are added to by the tensions of aborted missions, setbacks, delays, etc.? Won't this throw off their normal performance at the end when we get to the critical flights? Oh, we all wonder about that possibility, Craig. Although remote, it's there, staring us in the face just the same. But, uh, what were you saying about you wondered about your own judgment? Well, what if it doesn't show up? What if they lose this fine edge? How do we spot it? How? I'll tell you how, Craig, or at least how I think we can spot it. Am I being worried about it? No. No, not worried, but frightened, the way you say you are. The way we all are. We've got to keep right on top of them, phase by phase. We've got to make sure we know the score every minute. And if a breakdown should show up in any one of them, we've got to be able to spot it. And if it doesn't show, we've got to be sure the reason it doesn't is because it never happened. Craig, in this business, if at times you aren't frightened, really frightened, and you don't feel a deep personal concern for the guy who sticks his neck out. And you're not the right man for the job. And you are. Let's, uh, let's get up there and uh, take a look at that data from the last flight, huh? Yeah, it's ready, I know. This isn't the end, Craig. We'll be going through this again and again. Honey, aren't you going to have any? Oh, no. I, I'm going to go back to bed. Uh -huh. Pamela got in late last night, and I didn't sleep afterwards. <clears throat> what time? Oh, well, they went to Lancaster. Lancaster? Uh, Ernie, you smiled at breakfast. Well, you tricked me into it. Do you know something? What? You smell wonderful. I hope I didn't wake you up coming in last night. I never heard a thing. Where did you go? Well, we were going to Lancaster, but we never made it. Oh, too bad. That's a nice town, Lancaster. We uh, decided to reactivate our engagement instead. Oh, Pam, I'm so happy for you. Thank you. No coffee for you? You going back to bed? Ah, one of the things that you're going to learn early is you never go back to bed. When they make an early start, you make one, too. That way, you end up at the end of the day even asleep. That's good Air Force wifery. Diane, what is it? Just a baby, I think. Just a baby? No, not with me. In three years of marriage, I'm a two-time loser. What does that mean? Oh, it means I'm not the mama type or something. I don't know. It, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with me physically, but just after things get started, something always goes wrong. Have you told Ernie? No, and I won't. Not till I know I've got permanent possession. Pour me some coffee. Coffee? I want to see if I can hold it.
told you so. Oh. These strange new birds of the desert were first flown by Air Force and National Aeronautics and Space Administration pilots when the Russians were still trying to dig themselves out from under the rubble of Stalingrad. Unfortunately, the proposals set forth by NASA and the Air Force used a new language. Terms like exit, escape velocity, Mach 4, Mach 10, re-entry, pretty hard for people to swallow. Appropriations were slow in coming. But the search for the answer continued at Edwards Air Force Base. Mr. De Palma, Ed Fleming, ABC Television News. Will these then be the flights with the most critical control problem? Yes, indeed. The pilot knows his margin of error. He cannot over-control. The angle of his re-entry path is calculated so that the aerodynamic heating of the airframe will not exceed the design limit. Uh, Colonel Jessup, our public information officer, has a word for you about the pilots, I think, Colonel. Major Wilde, Lieutenant Colonel Brandon, and Matt Powell are three of the pilots working on the project at the present time. The complete pilot's pool consists of a Navy pilot, two Air Force, and three NASA pilots. The NASA pilots, like Matt Powell, are entirely civilian, employees of the United States government. Lou Irwin, ABC News. Has this project lost any of its significance because of the successful manned orbital missions? Uh, no, Mr. Irwin. This is a winged aerospacecraft under complete control of the pilot. He's not a uh, biological specimen, nor is he a backup for a, an automatic system. And the knowledge gained here will be directly reflected in the design and operation of future spacecraft. Mr. De Parma, Lee Giroux of NBC. Grant Holcomb of CBS and I, Grant, by the way, will be with us later in the testing house, would like to know which of these three pilots will be the first man to go into space in the X-15. Uh, that decision will be based on many factors and made by mutual agreement with just about everybody concerned in the project. Gentlemen, I'd like to say generally that uh, one of the pilot's biggest problems is to overcome and fight the effects of stress. As a matter of fact, I'd say that uh, possibly the greatest challenge to the pilot is to train himself to anticipate his instincts. Anticipation of instinct comes down then to reactions acquired through training. Now, where one kind of reflex flying inside the atmosphere fades out, and a different kind of reaction is needed, this is where overcoming the instinct makes the difference. Would you say then that the basic ingredient for project pilots is complete emotional stability? That's exactly right, Mr. Fleming. Psychological conditioning is one of the most important parts of the project pilot's training. First of all, we have to have people that are stable emotionally. And then we try to help them by simulating artificially on the ground as best we can the conditions that he'll meet in flight. And by doing this, we hope he'll be better able to cope with and recognize unknown factors should he meet them. Sound minds and a sound body? Oh, something more than that, I would say. A complete scientific dedication to the job at hand, eh? A firm belief in carefully worked for success. Each of these gentlemen is an aeronautical engineer as well as a highly qualified test pilot. The ultimate goal of the X-15 project will be an end result of work and tests to which they've all contributed. It's not in any sense a hero race. There are more than 3,000 people engaged in this one project. Just one more question. Ever since I covered the test at Cape Canaveral, I've been wondering very seriously about the future. Now, this is a, uh, a philosophical approach, I'm afraid. But it isn't, I assure you. It's a highly practical approach. What happens if all this speed and invasion of space meets us coming back, so to speak? That is, suppose that we have to start all over because of a space warfare. What's all this leading to? Well, we hope to deter that possibility by extending our own capabilities in space. Man would always be satisfied with a, a one-shot re-entry. The capsule method is a very valuable step in the right direction. But falling free in a sealed capsule with only one possibility of recovery, parachuting to a landing, leaves a lot to be desired. The X-15 pilot will be able to choose his angle of re-entry and control his speed and altitude and glide to his landing area, or uh, one of several alternates he has. 
always under pilot control. He has a choice. Well, that about wraps it up here, gentlemen. Let's go down to the blockhouse for the test firing. This way, please. Brings you back there to his family. Have you finally decided to ruin my life and marry Matt Powell? Well, I decided your life could stand being ruined a few more times. You always suffer so beautifully, Tony. Why don't you level with me, Pamela? Diane having another baby? Yes, she thinks so. Interesting. This can be a healthy situation, especially for Ernie. Good for Ernie. And X-15 and the project and NASA. Tony, what about Diane? Now, cut it out, Pamela. It's just a job. The X-15 project is a way of making a living. Simple as that, bread and butter. And half the trouble in life is caused by wives interfering with their husband's work. Oh, Tony, for heaven's sake. Do you know where babies start? Right there. In the frontal lobe of your brain, where the emotions are under general control. From there, they proceed mentally to the hypothalamus, which controls raw emotions, rage, hysteria, passion. Now, there must always be mental permissiveness, the will to or the will not to. That mental will to or will not to is so sensitive that 25% of uh, so-called sterile couples start their babies by the simple process of just talking the problem over with their doctor. Tony, somehow you seem to have missed the whole point. Diane has no problem in starting. I'm acutely aware of it. That's why I'm talking to you. Well, then do your head shrinking with her, not me. I heard you broke up with Matt last fall when he wouldn't take that job with uh, Cal Air. Now, deep in her mind, Diane undoubtedly wants Ernie to stop test flying also. What wife wouldn't? We've had several staff conferences on her. Diane and Ernie start their babies. But the belief in Ernie's short life expectancy psychosomatically disturbs her motives. Consequently, her pregnancies terminate so quickly that you cannot really call them pregnancies. Tony, I think you're crazy. Pamela, please don't search for a problem. You two getting along all right? Well, what he's tried to do is convince me that we should form a women's auxiliary of space cadets. Oh, I'm sorry I was delayed. Come on, girls. I'll uh, buy you lunch. We'll, uh, we'll go into the control blockhouse for the actual firing. Ernie, uh, Major Wilde here will be in the X-15 for the test. So, gentlemen, if you'll come with me, please. Right. Attention. There will be a rocket firing in the test area in 10 minutes. Repeat. 10 minutes. What about the composition of the fuel? Is it classified? Not for what it actually is, no. We use liquefied pure ammonia for the propellant and liquid oxygen for the oxidizer. So the ammonia burns and the liquid oxygen supports its combustion. That's correct, yes. Set warning lights. Close off the entrance. Stand by for door stop off. All right, Annie. It's all yours. Go into the blockhouse, gentlemen, please. Sealed in. Fly 
Blockhouse control. Canopy down and secure. You uh, settle down, gentlemen. I think we're just about ready to go. Fueling tap off. You aboard? Ernie, come on if you read me. Hooked in. I read you. I'm going to pressurize. Attention. All personnel clearing the firing area. Move back to safety limits. All set. Source pressure looks good. All gauges normal. Inspection completed. Rocket firing in one minute, 10 second countdown. Ready in X-15. Start and idle. System is on. Ten. Now it's only at half throttle. It uh, can develop over half a million horsepower at 3,600 miles per hour in flight. Half a million? Can we quote you on that? As a matter of fact, you can. Ernie, go to 100% power. Outside, without earplugs, the noise is so intense you'd feel nausea from the sound alone. Stay and pressurize, Ernie. Reset for another run at full power. How do you read me, Ernie? I read you loud and clear. Fire! A malfunction. Can you get to Major Wilde? Acknowledge. Acknowledge! Fire control of Blockhouse, Mr. De Palma. This is De Palma. Go ahead. Shot the forward section of the bird 30 feet down the ramp area. We got Major Wild out. He's all right. He is all right. You're going to have to stay in there till we can hose down the area. I'll keep this line open. Tony, you can call, can't you? All right. Sit still. I'll be right back. This is Major Rinaldi. Get me emergency control at the uh, test area blockhouse. Department blockhouse control. Oh, yes, yes, Sonny. Yeah, we, uh, we had a malfunction. Oh, they got Ernie out okay. No injuries. Glad to hear it, Tom. How's the bird? The bird? Well, can't tell too much about that right now. I'll check with you later, Tom. All right, goodbye. Uh, 
charm your office. I'm trying to get a hold of you. Washington called. Right. I'll see you all back at NASA. Tom? Pat? Uh, that call was on the private line from Washington. I'd kind of like to be there when you call back. It seems there's a very bad reaction brewing along the sidelines, especially among the press. Yeah. Well, thanks, Greg. Uh, you better wait here for the investigation team, huh? I'll call you from my office. Right. The loss of the number three birds cost us plenty in more ways than one. But our uh, people have been picking over the pieces and they've come up with some answers. Not all of them, but enough. Our engineers and technicians have been working with the boys over at North American. And they have the number three bird back in its original jig. They've done a miraculous job. And believe it or not, in time, that number three bird will fly again. Now, we have to take up the slack by stepping up the mission. So this morning, Lee will be dropped in the number two bird with the new XLR-99 engine. We'll be trying for 3,000 miles an hour at 150,000 feet. Uh, Matt? Well, I've drawn chase two, round of the Lee. Lee. You take the countdown, Matt, up the fuel jettis, and I'll pick up the control check. Okay. That's what I've got. OK, good luck. Let's go, Lee. I'll get you into your suit. I'll go along with you. There's some things I can check while he's getting dressed. Pressurization coming on. Suit check complete. This is 003 to NASA 1, approaching Ely. Jettison check complete. Pressurize and tanks. Lee, one minute warning. Prime coming on. Source pressure good. To all stations, launch light is on. This is a final OK. Have a good 
good start, Lee. You're looking good. miles an hour, gentlemen. Yeah, not even the score a little, huh? Let's go to National 9 for the landing. Procedure to Lake Bed. Closing in on you, Lee. Going to jettison any time. How's it feel to hold the world speed record? Not bad. Incidentally, I got a temperature reading of over 900 degrees outside skin. I don't think it did any more than blister the paint. This is a solid bird, man. I'm here. Just blow you both. Jettisoning looks good. You all through, back slapping. Let's get the bird back on the ground.
Well, we'd finally celebrate the birthday Lee had in Tullahoma. And the drill corps is actually going to allow Matt and me to get married, I don't believe. Yeah. Ernie, the gas. Uh, waiter. I don't want this to get around the club, but I've saved $8 out of last week's housekeeping money. Baby, General Custer is very, very proud of you. A waiter. Yes, sir. Uh, a bottle of Piper Hyde 653, please. Domestic, if you haven't got that. In which case, just forget all about the year, huh? We have Piper Hyde 653, sir. Fine, fine. I uh, always knew that Matt had a lot of class. Uh, you're gonna pay for the check, you know. Oh, uh, due entirely to my unhappy childhood. Ask uh, Tony Rinaldi. He'll tell you all about it. And Tony will tell you what your hypothalamus. <laughs> what in the world is your hypothalamus? Uh, well, uh, I don't really know, but according to Tony, you need it. <laughs> Pamela, Matt. I'm not the kind of a guy to go for the light touch and this sort of thing. I don't want to go heavy on it either. Oh, I wish I could think of some words that aren't used so often. However, I can't, so... Health and happiness to you both. Long life and contentment. And a sense in the end of a job well done. Thank you, Z. I'm both of us. And uh, many happy returns. And happy birthday, Lee. Happy Thank birthday. You. Thank you. Happy Thank birthday, darling. Hey, General Custer. How about taking your old lady on the dance floor? Uh, Emily? Yeah, say, uh, Matt. Would you like to dance with me? Doesn't it, Dad? Sure, Felix. You don't think I was going to give you a toy at your age, do you? I mean, it really works. I set it for 425 for myself. Then I set it for 426 to wake you up and show you that it works. That's a good old scientific approach. Just a bit. You watch me shave now? Well, sure. So I'll know how, of course. It'll be five years before I have to. Maybe only four. You getting a little stubbly? Well, you have to anticipate, don't you? Sure, Mike. You can anticipate as much as you want to. If you take a tip from an old hand, don't be in such a hurry to grow up. Well, you can never go back. And when you're a man, Be a man. You know what I mean? Uncle Matt's gonna marry Pamela, isn't he? 
That's what they told me. Does he really go for that love stuff? You just wait five years. Maybe only four. I turn the love stuff off on television. Along with the commercials, huh? No, oh, I like the commercials. But you can have all that love stuff. Let's talk about the X-15. We usually do. Said in the papers that number three bird would never fly again. I bet the North Americans are working on it right now. Where do you hear all this? Well, I'll tell you. Mom has some kind of a deal with you, I know. Women. She's actually afraid of some of the flying you do. So she makes you tell everything before you do it. That way she says she won't be frightened. So when you tell her, I listen. But believe me, Dad, I don't take notes. And I don't put anything down on paper. Yeah, well, you're under arrest anyhow. Mikey. I want to straighten you out on something. And I don't want you to ever forget it. You know, your mother is a fine, solid woman. So when you say whim like that, you don't ever mean your mother, huh? Okay? Nothing. I want to chase planes. X-15 on profile. Down due to pump over speed. Short of profile. Twenty percent fuel remaining. Shall I restart? Negative, Matt. Do not restart. Watch your angle of attack. He's passing through the forty mile level.
You're getting heat, Matt. You're below 40 miles. Matt, increase your angle of attack. We'll go. X-15 to NASA-1. Excessive heat increasing at this level, the shallow angle. Nice one to X-15. Matt, increase your angle. You're going to exceed your temperature limit. Nice one to X-15. Altitude, 35 miles. Speed, 4,000. Increase your angle, Matt. You're exceeding the design limit. NASA wanted to chase planes, spread out to both areas. It's going to be short. NASA 1 to X-15. You're inside the temperature envelope, Matt. Turn to 197 degrees. We have you 100 miles outside the recovery perimeter. Go to max L over D. Stretch it. Change heading to 175. This is Chase 1. Roger. 175. We'll call its first visual contact. Be short. Chase one to NASA one in position for recovery. Matt, this is Lee. I have you in sight. Hold it steady. I'm going to come in close. Right, Lee. What's the story? You're too short to glide in. Any fuel left for an extra air stock? About 20% indicator still in the tank. Go to start and idle. Then accelerate for more altitude. I'm clear. Go ahead.
acknowledgement. Shutting down, jettisoning propellants. Chase one to NASA one. Go to secondary channel. Chase one to NASA one. We're ready, you leave. What happened? Explosion in the X-15's rocket section. My aircraft hit by flying debris. Losing hydraulic pressure. Communicate with me on secondary channel only, Tom. Okay, Lee. Can you continue support? This is NASA 1 to Chase 1. Lee, do you read me? Over. X-15 to Chase 1. I hear you, Lee. I'm burned out. Turning south. How bad is the damage? No fire, Matt. But some damage to the rocket section. Watch your speed. Matt, you still don't have any fire. And you're lined up real good. I'm inside the range. A little stretch and we'll make it. NASA wanted to chase one. Lee, you all right? This is Chase 2, turning southeast to Lake Man. May not reach a position in time. Chase 1 to Chase 2. I'll count him down, Ernie. Matt, you can stretch your glide out. Nice going. Watch your angle at touchdown. They won't give out any information over the telephone. We just have to wait.
That's the one, the farmer. Now we're just waiting to hear from you. Right. Over. They said they couldn't find anything. They said forget it. Put my arms around you, Maggie, and let you cry, but I guess it's a little too soon for that. No. I've got the rest of my life to cry. We only let Control know he was in trouble. Stay to guide me in and calm me down for the landing where it was too low for him to eject. Thanks, Matt. Give me a few minutes alone, will you?
it, kid. Mike! Everybody's got their own axe to grind. Well, as far as I'm concerned, the hell with them. I'm glad to hear you feel that way about it, Craig. But they want answers. They call Lee's death an unnecessary loss on a routine mission. Now, how do you talk to people like that? You don't talk to them. You try to educate those people, you wind up talking to yourself. They suffered no personal loss. For them, this is just headlines and statistics. I read once you never argue with statistics. You remember once we had a conversation about overexposure, uh, watching for breakdowns, getting too fine an edge? And you told me you got to stay on top of it. I know, Craig, I know. I'm trying to forget about it. I thought I could take the human factor element, hold it out at arm's length, and I was doing all right with it, too, until this afternoon. Tom, nobody buys personal loss anymore. Only statistics, you know that. The cold, callous Colonel Brewster. And the abused, browbeaten De Palma. Now, like it or not, we'll be back here tomorrow with a new replacement and a brand new countdown. Statistically neat and simple. In the NASA conference room in Washington, D.C., nearly three years ago, something was said which I think should be repeated at this time. We said, when the time comes, choosing one of them will take absolutely nothing away from any of the others, because each one will have made more than significant contributions to the success of the program. I am sure all of you here agree with me that the team has done just that. Matt Powell will make the first attempt for a maximum performance try. Lieutenant Commander Joe LaCrosse, who is familiar to all of us, as is his fine record, will fly chase one. Joe, I'm sure I speak for everybody here when I say welcome aboard. Thank you, sir. And Major Wild, chase two. The countdown is underway, gentlemen. The drop will be over Ely, Nevada. This will be a full power to burnout for a maximum altitude try. Uh, Pre-launch briefing at 4 a.m. tomorrow. That's it. How about dinner, man? Yeah. New alloy for the sauce regulator. Won't malfunction anymore. Yeah, I'm tickled to death. Nothing. Don't give me that, man. I've been watching these last weeks, straining, pushing yourself. Don't give me any speeches, Ernie. I've heard all I want to hear. You're not to blame, Matt. The investigation showed that. Investigation, that's fine. What about the politicians on the sideline and some of the press squeezing at Department Brewster? You'd think this whole thing were going on in a dark cave somewhere. You can't 
cram this stuff down somebody's throat, man, it takes time. Yeah. Well, how much time does it take to show that this isn't routine? Lee had plenty of time to reject and didn't. Not routine, is it? Don't think I haven't been asking myself questions, too. It isn't any good, man. I'll tell you one thing, though. If Lee knew what we were blubbering about, he'd probably laugh at us both. Yeah. Yeah, maybe you're right, Ernie. It's just a little too soon. Sure it is. Come on, let's go. The girls are gonna burn the steak. I'm gonna take you up to 200,000 feet. Pressure looks through at 100,000 feet. Good. Let me know if you feel any change. Will do. Taking off really now. I'll talk to you at rendezvous. Stay in the slot and happy profile. Right, Ernie. Switch all the uh, channels on at all 900. Okay, Matt. Better start your cockpit check. You'll be sealed in about 20 minutes. All right, Tony. Back. Cockpit check at uh, left hand console. Uh, left hand console, radio set, uh, main channel. Set. Uh, face mask, heat switch off. Heat switch off. Intercom switch on. Uh, oxygen check, select B52 oxygen. Right. 52 oxygen. That's it. X-15. X-15 to NASA-1. Go ahead. Matt, best of luck from all of us. Right, Tom. Well, we've got a little less than an hour.
Let's go, boys. There goes chase one. Matt, control is ready for a stable platform checklist. X-15 to all stations, continuing checklist. X-15 power on. B-52 power off. Windshield heat on. Stable platform transition to internal power okay. NASA 1 to X-15. Eight minutes from launch. Go to X-15, oxygen. Launch operator, check for clear system. Clear to go to manual for lock stop off. X-15 to chase two, ready for fuel jettison test. Acknowledge. I'm in line, Matt, let her go. They're okay, Matt. Check out item 224. We'll go. 24 checked out. X-15 to NASA-1. Jettison system working okay. Source pressure good. Power transfer normal. Ball nose readings coming up. This is Chase-1 to X-15. Mark two minutes to launch point. Aye, aye, Joe. NASA-1 to all stations. I have launch minus 90 seconds. X-15 to all stations, switching to internal trip light at launch point. Come in, Ely. Come in, Beatty. Master switch on. That on. I have starting night. Locks pop bearing, 37 degrees minimum. Okay, at 40 degrees. Switch all recorders and oscillographs to fast. Switching to fast. I have 10 seconds and counting. Support aircraft in position. Nine seconds. Eight seconds. Seven seconds of counting. Set launch lever to ready. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. NASA one falling clear. Chase two to X fifteen. Hold that heading, man. Chase two. He's right on profile, Ernie. Passing the 30 mile limit. Maximum power. He's reaching maximum speed.
has won Walt Stations. Matt Powell has successfully made his exit and is in his coasting pad. Begin your re-entry on mark minus five. Set your angle at 18 degrees. Steady. One, two, three, four, five. Mark. has overtaken fiction. The pathfinders have marked and illuminated a trail in space for the others who soon will follow. This is the beginning of the natural extension of man's capability.